All right, so we got the old car in the garage here. This has got 230 on it now. It has a pretty, pretty profuse power steering leak. And I don't think it, that it's the O-ring where the reservoir meets the pump. I believe it's this. So this is the little air valve. This is the air valve that goes in the power steering pump where basically the engine vacuum sucks on it. So I think this is where it's leaking from. So two things, this car is leaking power steering fluid externally like onto the ground very profusely like it's a fast leak at this point it started like 60,000 miles ago and it's gotten to where it's like okay i actually have to do something about this now um the other thing is this car smokes on startup not always but sometimes it's definitely doing it so I, this is a 31 year old car with 229,000 miles on it if the engine is smoking a little bit on startup from valve stem seals hey you know what it had a good run it's allowed to smoke at this point in its life. But I kind of have a feeling maybe that this valve is causing uh, transmission fluid to get sucked up into the intake. And maybe that's what's causing it. Maybe that's wishful thinking. But I do know that that does occasionally happen on this model. Anyways, long story short, we're going to try and replace this thing. Anything in the engine bay of this thing is kind of a challenge. I'm by far not a real mechanic. And it's kind of chilly out today. I don't really want to be out here. It's not that bad. It's like 45. It's like Georgia chilly. Um, but I did all my chores yesterday and it's Sunday now. So it's like, all right, well, I get to do something that I actually like, I don't know, might be kind of fun. If it's not terrible, it'll probably be, that's the thing about working on cars though. It's, it's usually like, it's fun and it's terrible. That's what makes it great. Basically these cars have a couple of vulnerabilities in the power steering fluid department as far as leaks. So there's our power steering pump, got the reservoir on top of it. There's our reservoir. So two things, the O-ring where the reservoir meets to the pump that tends to leak on these and it'll actually take your alternator out unfortunately because the way they made this car the alternator is right under the power steering pump uh and then the other thing is if you can see those two lines those two lines right there are vacuum lines so yeah so those two vacuum lines down there see those two lines right there those two lines that are like real greasy looking the two little ones that are kind of together what those correspond to is those are them right there so this guy right here this fitting this side threads into the power steering pump and it sucks on it and then it sucks using these two vacuum lines that's how toyota designed it and this even comes in a dime bag this part actually yeah it literally comes in a damn dime sack so that tells you i mean these japanese guys in these suits they look like a bunch of stiffs but you know they're lighting it up in their spare time apparently i don't even know how somebody could get the idea for all this air sucking and everything and these hoses without spending some time in a damn dorm room at one point in their life. So I'm not gonna get this hose off right now because it's kind of, it's in there really good and I don't want to disturb it. But what I can tell you is the last time that I had this vacuum hose off, um, I could see that the power steering fluid had been being sucked up in there. So basically the integrity of this valve's in question. It's supposed to have a diaphragm in there. I'm sure the diaphragm's probably blown. And I think it's sucking power steering up through here. Because yeah, like I said, that hose right there, if you take that off, it'll be full of power steering fluid. So there's that. And then there's also the fact that like, just if you visually look at those two hoses where they go on that valve, they're just, they're, they're soaking, it's wet. So yeah, I mean, there's, in my humble opinion, there's ample evidence to indict this valve right here. And it's like, what, 30 bucks on Rock Auto? So anyways. We're gonna see if we can get it off. I think my strategy is I'm gonna take this air intake off because that's really easy. It'll give me some, some extra working room. And then the return line to the power steering pump, which is that line right there, we're gonna take that off because that should be easy and that should get us more room. And then once that intake and that return line are out of the way, there's not a whole lot of easy stuff that can be removed that's in the way of us getting to this valve. That should be That should be all we need to take off. And then it's gonna be, yeah, we'll take the two hoses off that ought to be pretty simple. I mean, there'll be nothing left of them anyways. And then the real question is, how are we gonna get a wrench on that guy right there? Are we gonna have to come from under the car? Because I don't wanna go into this car right this instant. I gotta take belly pans off and I'm not even gonna go into it, but yeah. So that's the, that's the attack plan, if you will. All right, so there's our pump. Honestly, not a bad looking unit, all things considered. Looks pretty shiny and clean and like it hasn't been you know leaking crazy profusely for too terribly long so there's two weak spots with these as far as leaks go i think i pointed them out earlier 
But this guy right here that we're in our place, this air valve thing, looks like it came out of a college student's coffee table. And then where this reservoir right here meets up to the pump, that O-ring in there, that supposedly is like the main leak point. Either way, this guy right here is situated directly on top of the alternator. So that's kind of, that's the rub because when that power steering pump leaks, it leaks onto your alternator and kills your alternator and your alternator is way more necessary to sustain life than your power steering pump. Not to mention it's kind of buried under there. I kind of hate that I'm not replacing it now. Uh, it does say Toyota on it. So yeah, there it is. I mean, there's the Toyota stamp. So I'm guessing that alternator has been in there since October of 92 when this car was built. I, I mean, on one hand, I hate to not replace it, but on the other hand, it's not showing any signs of needing replaced and parts quality. I could just as easily get something that's bad out of the box. And I know that this is proven, so I'm not going to do it. Not to mention, uh, this car is kind of currently scheduled for replacement. So this is probably the last time I'm servicing it. Um, but we got the power steering pump out. That is the big thing. So we're going to reseal that. We are going to stop by AutoZone real quick, pick up a few things. For one thing, this is the return line. This is the return hose for it. And like very first step of the job, I had to take this off. And I mean, it's a 31, 32 year old hose piece of rubber. So it just immediately just started disintegrating and cracking. It's like, all right, well, I gotta go to AutoZone and replace that. That's how everything, every time I work on this car, everything is like that. I mean, you'll see there's just like, zip ties and like random hoses cobbled together and, and uh yeah this is from i mean <laughs> look i do a lot of miles on this car a lot of miles on this car so it's fine is what i'm trying to say so when you take this power steering pump out it is easier if you take the pulley off and not take the pulley off because i'm not replacing the pump um, but nevertheless, you can get it out without the pulley. Uh, you will at some point probably want to remove that upper radiator hose or lower, I guess that's the lower radiator hose, the one that's in the way, you want to remove the radiator hose. Uh, I had initially thought maybe I could do this job without taking the pump out and that's not really possible. Uh, in order to get to this thing, you really have to have the pump off the car. Not to mention having the pump off the car is a great time to go ahead and do the O-ring for the reservoir. So, yeah, it's not a terrible job. Honestly, I sat around scratching my ass and thinking, oh, do, do I need to take this, the pump out to do this job? I sat around thinking about it for longer than it honestly took me to even take the pump out. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's like you take the belt off. The pump's got four bolts, essentially, three bolts and a nut. Um, it's not crazy terrible. This is the high pressure return line. It's got like a little copper washer on there. I feel certain I'm supposed to replace that. I feel certain I'm supposed to replace that. I don't have that part. Um, and I doubt that anybody like Napper or AutoZone or anybody who's open on Sunday is gonna have that part. I did have to drain a little bit of coolant out of it. Also, while I was in here, I did notice a small coolant leak, um, but now everything's wet now, so you wouldn't be able to tell. But before I was able to identify this, where this plastic, I guess that's a thermostat housing, where this plastic piece bolts up to that aluminum piece right there, that interface is leaking. If that's not leaking, then it's the housing itself. So when I have the housing it off, I'll inspect it for cracks, but I assume it's just needs a new gasket. Honestly, you could probably just do it with RTV. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a real mechanic, so I don't know what an actual like smart person would do, but and I don't even know if I'm gonna fool with that today, to be honest, because like, I don't want to make a slow leak worse. I have to drive to Knoxville in the morning. I always do this to myself. It's like, it'll be like the night before a business trip and I'll wake up and I'll be like, this is a great time to tear apart my entire car and make it to where it doesn't run and it's impossible to put back together. That's how I know I'm gonna get it done because I have to use it tomorrow. Anyways, anyways, time for autism. This is a cold start. I haven't started this thing in probably maybe a month, maybe just a couple of weeks, but it's been a little while. Uh, I could tell the battery was a little bit weak, but I mean, the engine probably only had to spin over like three times. It just fired right up. Sounds pretty decent. All right, so I'm driving the truck to AutoZone right now, I'm actually driving it back from AutoZone, but I noticed something we need to go ahead and take care of immediately. Uh, light came on, it says check engine. 
so we need to handle that right now. We're gonna check on this thing. I think this is where the engine is. And I'm checking, and based on the sound, uh, it sounds like it's a 302. That's awesome. All right, so I'm back from the auto parts store. I got all seven things that were on my list. I did have to hit both Napa and AutoZone. Uh, new air filter, spent 50 bucks on that gallon of synthetic ATF. So all told, this was 120 bucks. But I got all the stuff I needed to do this right. I got some hoses to replace the brittle hoses that are dead. Those are for vacuum, that's for trans fluid return. Uh, I got a universal O-ring set to do the O-ring for the reservoir. I got an O-ring for the thermostat because that I took the thermostat housing off right before I went to AutoZone and determined that that needed to be replaced. The thermostat itself is fine. And then I got some copper crush washers. I don't know if those are going to fit. I may have to reuse the old crush washers. This is where we are at. Um, obviously, power steering pump is still removed. I did take the um, thermostat housing off. The thermostat itself looks fine. It's just the... Um, you could tell that the o-ring around the thermostat was leaking so we're gonna do that uh hopefully button this thing up pretty quick i think it's two o'clock in the afternoon so i got a couple more hours of work but this guy's got to be on the road tomorrow so yep time to put it back together all right so making progress uh, i'm like 10 minutes back from AutoZone. as you can see the uh, thermostat housing is back on with the new thermostat o-ring in it and more importantly uh, we're cleaning the power steering pump up. Uh, the reservoir is back on the pump with a brand new O-ring from this universal kit right here. Hopefully it works, but if it doesn't, I saved the old O-ring. Honestly, the old O-ring was pretty dried up. It just, it pretty much just fell right out. So I'm pretty sure the new one's gonna be an improvement on that. Uh, more importantly, our new air valve is installed. There it is, look at that. Uh, I cleaned the pump up a little bit just to shine it up. It cleans up pretty well. I didn't do anything, but just kind of go over it with a paper towel to be honest with you and we also looked at the new crush washers that came in our universal set i am going to use a couple of the new crush washers from the universal set they're not the exact exact same size as the old crush washers but again i'm going to save those and if these turn out to be a bad idea we can just swap them back out pretty easily uh so that is that so time to start reinstalling a pump on the car all right, so our brand new re-owned power steering pump is back in the vehicle. Uh, re-owned is kind of a little bit like pre-owned. It's kind of like it's not new, but you owned it before, so now you own it again, so it's re-owned kind of thing. Anyways, I cleaned it up pretty good. It's pretty shiny. Um, you can see we got our new crush washers right there, our new copper washers there where we got the high-pressure line hooked up. Uh, new O-ring in the... Uh, new O-ring at the reservoir, and then we got our new air valve down there. And then, so now we gotta make some hoses. We gotta make a low pressure turn line right there. And then we gotta cut, make a couple vacuum hoses to go from there up to there and there. So yeah, that all went pretty fast, pretty smooth. Pumps back in, uh, like I said, hoses, and then the lower rad hose, and then the belt. And then, oh, and then we gotta throw the intake back in, but that takes like five minutes. And I got new air filters, that's gonna be fun. So that is where we're at. This one, for some reason, was really sucking up a lot of striped, winged, stinging insects. But there you go, old versus new. Honestly, I'm, I don't even know why I'm replacing this because I don't think that air filter is honestly that old, but it, it kind of looks like it needs it. And like I said, this is probably the last time I'm servicing this car. Regardless, uh, pumps in, everything is pretty much fine. Not really. I did, to be honest, I broke I broke this new little valve. So, a few things. We originally set out to replace this valve right here, right? This is the old one. Um, this is what it came out like. So, for one thing, that little plastic piece is broken. I broke the new one even worse than that, but I'm not sure it matters. So, these are both vacuum ports. All right, so we're back from Knoxville. The power steering leak appears to be fixed, so that's good. Uh, coolant leak is also definitely fixed at the thermostat housing, so that's good. So, we fixed some stuff. I uh, just want to circle back around with regards to this valve. This is the old one that we took out. The new one is in there. The new one is broken. I broke it going in. Basically, and they're known for this, when you try to put the new uh, the vacuum hoses on these new little, little plastic nipples, they break. That's exactly what I did. I broke it going in. And so 
I had to figure out exactly what the deal is with this valve. So what I did was I researched it and figured out what I should have done to begin with, which is I learned what this valve does and that it's completely unnecessary. And that what a lot of people do is they actually just go get a bolt from Ace Hardware or whatever hardware store. And they just of those thread sizes right there. And they just bolt that straight up into the pump and they never worry about it again. Why isn't this focusing? There it is. So this little guy right here, basically this side, this metal threaded side goes in the power steering pump. I do not know how it works, okay? All I'm gonna tell you is there's a valve on this side right here and that valve opens to open these ports up to one another, essentially. So these two ports, they go to vacuum lines. That vacuum line right there that I'm pointing at, and then that one right there. This one is post-throttle, this one is pre-throttle. They are both, both post-math sensor. So what happens is, what Toyota devised, and it's completely unnecessary and extravagance, and it doesn't, it's just not, it's not necessary. Some old Toyotas had it, some didn't, but this is a kind of a relic from the um, throttle by cable era, back before you just had a little electronic motor that could do all this for you. But this was to create an artificial, uh, artificial throttle load when you were using the power steering at low speeds. Maybe that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. But if you were in a power, if you were in a parking lot and your wheels were straight, the valve in here was closed, so it didn't create that artificial, basically artificial suckage from post throttle to pre throttle. And then if you turned the steering wheel, then something in here would happen that was magical, which would make something in here happen, which was also magical, and a valve would open. And now there's suctions in between these two. Okay, if that makes sense. And then so the suctions would basically be like a tiny little throttle suction past the throttle plate. And if this is making sense and you're putting up what I'm pick, picking up what I'm putting down, that's great. And if it's not, that's also great, but I can't offer you a better explanation than that, okay? Basically, I don't even wanna keep trying. So anyways, none of this is necessary. And so basically I just plugged the vacuum lines. I plugged them and I screwed in the new um, broken valve so that the power steering pump didn't leak fluid. And that's good. That's adequate. That's all we need to do in this situation. We don't need to fix this system. It's been deleted. Everyone deletes it. It's all over the internet. I wish I'd researched it earlier. Could have saved 35 bucks and just done a bolt instead of this. Uh, but it works and it's great and it's fine. And I noticed no difference having the system deleted and it doesn't leak anymore. So there you go. And also, I lied when I said that Knoxville was going to be this car's last big trip. We are turning around and heading down to South Georgia Monday morning. And uh, yeah, that's um, life of a nuclear plant roadie in the spring. So that's it. We fixed the car. I'm calling it fixed. I mean, how fixed do you want? I mean, look, how fixed is relative on this thing.